What's up, what's up everybody? Welcome to season four of Tea Time with the Girls. You know, we've had a long summer of lots of tea and things of that nature, so um, we are happy to be back. And as you see, we have some brand new faces, also with reoccurring faces, <laughs> with my co-host. So, as always, just like in all seasons, I just want to just start off by saying that I want to thank everyone for your loyal support. You know, basically your comments, your your comments of support, as well as your comments of shade. You know, it helps us grow, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so, but we promise that this season we will bring you new content and new material, and basically just you know just be, have a, a whole new outlook on life. So with that said, um, we're going to get into um, a couple of things. We're going to start off with an introduction here. As you can tell here, we have two new faces here that some people may be familiar with. Um, Juliana Huxtable. Welcome. We're with now. Thank you, DJ. DJ Poet and Activist. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Shageja Diamond, recording artist. Mm -hmm. An yeah. activist. Well, An activist. All right. So, black trans loyalty in the so, building. With, without further further ado, we prepared a little excerpt to give you a little background on what these girls are about. So, why don't you go ahead and check that out? I was in junior high. People would like put signs on my back, stick things in my hair. People would shout things at me about my body. I was like birthing hips any range of faggot, nigger, titty boy, whatever. There's like any range of things related to race and body. It wasn't really until I moved to New York that just naturally being here, I shed all of that slowly but surely. All of those have come off and I still deal with that, but I, I like myself now, I love myself. Thank you guys so much. Next up we have Juliana Huxtable. Hands. We start embracing these people. We start getting to know these people. Will we actually remember these people and remember these names and remember these faces? So once you see one of these faces on the train, you know it is your duty to fight for these people. It is your duty to stand for these people. And I wrote a song called I Am Her. It speaks as, as to, any, to everybody who's an outcast. A lot of people have heard it, and I want to make sure that people know the damn word. That's why I keep on singing. I got other songs. Don't look at me immediately and whisper behind my back thinking I'm naive. This is my sovereign hospitality. Yes, God. Tolerates more fears than even I can believe. There's another path in everybody's life. And I am her. I, I am, am her. her. All right, so we're back. So I hope you guys got a feel for our guests and um, a little bit about what they're about. So without further ado, we're going to get into one of our favorite segments. What's, what's, what's your tea? Mm. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll start, start off with me. Um, basically, my summer has been a summer of ups and downs. Um, we did the trans picnic. Oh, Which, fun. yeah, it was, was fun. fun. Was, yeah. I heard so much about that. Like, I hate that I missed that. Cause, like, well, you know, it was a good cause. Like, it was a good cause, but the fact, the, yeah. Why you like, hate it? We got canceled. It was, canceled. It was, no, it was not canceled. We got three rain. good hours in before yeah, that. Yeah, it rained on us. Yes. So we got three hours in before Mother Nature said, you know, not today. Not today, sure. <laughs> so um, that was really good. Um, Basically, we started a new segment for Tea Time, which was on the call of Google Hangouts, which we'll start playing with every once in a while, so it gives the fans something to interact with. You know, other than that, that's my tea. So I want to take it over to my co-host, Ms. GMMA. Hi, welcome back, you guys. What's your tea, Girl, oh my God. God is good when I say God is good. But first, before I give you my tea, can we just take a moment of silence for all the um, brothers and sisters we lost in um, Orlando? And all the people are just going through it right now in Charlotte.
Thanks, you guys. Honestly, if I can just say this, we need more love than we, we do. Can we take a moment of silence for the 21 trans women that have been murdered this year? Okay, we can do that too. Yes. You know, tra black trans lives matter, and we need to have that that kind of fight that we have for black men. It needs to be for black women, for black trans women also, because we're not getting the same kind of outroar when we're killed. Well yeah. said. Well said. Okay. Yeah. So fair enough. We'll get into that too. So okay. So. Um, <laughs> Um, my what's the tea is I'm back for you know my second season, so I'm super excited. And then on top of that, Man Made Productions is doing a lot of great things, you guys. And we have um, we just now opened our very first nonprofit organization called Ghost Project, the Ghost Program. Excuse me, the Ghost Program. The Ghost Program means guiding, helping others survive transitions. Excuse me, guiding, helping others survive transition. Um, basically, we're going to be working and gearing to help girls um, of all colors, of all you know backgrounds, to they, you know to change your life, not your destiny. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're tired of the the shenanigans that life has been putting you through, we're here to help you. So we'll be telling you more about that. You know, I'm just so glad I had to tell people and stuff. It's open. I'm excited. You can check us out on Man Made um, on our Man Made homepage. Um, all that'll be down, you know, below. And also, stuff. you need to say that you're a reality star now. Oh yes, I completely <laughs> forgot. <laughs> yes. And also, please, 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 por favor, all my friends, you make sure you go ahead and watch Little Man Made on YouTube. It's going, it's going to be um, our second episode coming up very, very soon. And um, it's... An episode every three months. It's right. It's right, 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 you know. Well, you know, we're trying to be, we're trying to be, I'm trying to be, you know, dictated because we have all these things going on. We have, you know, the, you know, the, the event coming in November that we're trying to do for the girls and all the rest of us. So we're trying to, you know, pace ourselves. But yeah, you guys, support, like, subscribe, share all that you guys you know it's there it's for you guys you know showing you what we do and what we do for you so perfect so that brings us over to my other co-host oh my god did we get you guys sure? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna get we're gonna see the best for last okay <laughs> uh, uh, my birthday is coming up kind of time is wow. i'm a libra right. um yeah and my album is coming out too i'm really happy about that to be a trans artist and to be around all these, you know, trans people and the people in the industry. Um, and um, I want to apologize because I was um, on a BuzzFeed um, video that a lot of people were upset about because they felt like it was violent. Um, it was a video about tucking. And I just want to apologize to anyone who felt like it was offensive. But um, I, really, I, was, I saw that same video and I honestly thought, thought you that kept, it was offensive. I honestly thought that you kept the real PC. You know, there's so much I, other stuff that you could have been like, you know, like, yeah, take my right. roll and I pull it up from back here. <laughs> you know, I, feel, I think most people were offended by like little things, like like who opened it up and things of that nature. Yes, you know, like, it, like yeah, so I, one I one bad seat could ruin the whole yeah. bunch. Yeah, but um, yeah, the video got backlash, and I just want to apologize to any <clears throat> girls in the community that got upset and called me a sellout. That's not my intention at all. Um, what were you gonna say? Well, call me, honey. I'll tell you that time. Okay, okay. well, y'all yeah, already it know. It was a feel like, I feel like kind of indifferent yeah. about that. Um, uh -huh. like, I feel like there was so much for us as, as trans women and, or just in the community, period. I uh -huh. feel like we police each other too much. Uh -huh. First of all, we always triggered about every single thing. So yeah, it's, nothing, it's, it's nothing we can do right. <clears throat> even even like even just like just being on this show. This show is amazing. This this show is is definitely cutting edge, and I respect the show. I like I said, I've I watched the show before, and, and you know, and I didn't understand just like why people weren't really just like getting into it because it's trans women. Yeah, but we're not cookie cutters. Oh, we're not we're not cookie cutters. And show. We're not, but 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 okay. Moving on to what I what I was saying about about how they attacked you. Now we're always so quick to attack trans women for everything, but we're always there for the men because we love the men, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're always looking for something to shame mm -hmm. uh, um, our own sisters. Um, either we're clock we're too clock or we're not feminine enough. We're quick to talk too much. We're too, to we're too much. We're too easy or something. And so when it comes to to, to like us educating our community. I feel like what you were doing in that episode is that you were teaching those who were who was coming up after us. That's exactly because a lot of people don't yeah. know how to. They felt like they felt a lot of people don't know how to talk. Yeah. 
And it's not something that only drag queens do. The girls, we trans women talk all the time. Exactly. And, and I think the thing was they were mad because you were giving up out, out of secret, but not looking at the fact that you were helping people. Yes. And if anytime you're helping somebody with their transition and how, how to do it smoothly, I believe that you saved some people's lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Just saying. Honestly, I honestly believe that, you know, when we, when we get backlash, when you get backlash, because I honestly just see the thing. And um, the, the video you were talking about. And I was like, first of all, first question is like, well, why did I get asked to do it? You know? Cause I would have been real, you know, non PC about it, you know. It's all different types of ways, you know. But I, I think the children are just gonna look for some reason to, to be upset or just to poke fun or just poke, you know. And going back real quick to what you said, how we don't get, um, how we don't get the men together. I had, I had said the same thing when we had, um, hey you guys, Seven King and the whole cast of Eden Garden here. We had them here, and we had actually had a conversation about it being a man's world, which is probably why it's easier to accept trans men than it is to, you know, mm -hmm. accept, you know, um, us trans women. So, you know, and that also has to change, you know, it really does. But how do we how do we change? We change ourselves, we change for the better, and hopefully people can follow. So, but I completely agree with you, sis. Definitely, I, I feel like we're, like, nobody really noticed or acknowledges how much we're under attack. You know, like, we're under attack from our lovers. Mm -hmm. You know, like we have that pressure from our lovers, we have a pressure from our friends, our family, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, society. Yeah. And so we never do anything right. You know, so we, we're, again, we're not a woman enough when we go into spaces. Sometimes when we're with our lovers or, or the man we're with. So sometimes, you know, you know, we have to deal with this stigma of trying to be woman enough for him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in our family, you know, they just look at us as, as, as boy in dresses. You know, so yeah. no, matter, no matter what, they're always looking like, oh, you're so cute, uh, you know, you're coming along, you look just like a woman. No, I am a woman. Mm. So they try to discredit your womanhood. Mm. I, I, you know? I, I think we're going to get into that a little bit later on. Right. It's gender. It's gender. Mm -hmm. but, so. <laughs> did you, did you, is there anything else that you want to say about No, that's it. That's All right. It. So I want to bring it over to Miss Juliana Huxtable. Uh, Hello, your tea? My tea. I'm... So excited to be here. I'm I excited to have been on the show for so long. <laughs> um, I'm happy it's still hot in New York. Uh -huh. I'm oh my happy God, right? in the company of my sister. <laughs> <laughs> my tea right now. I got my nails done today. That's all right. Awesome. <laughs> Anything nice. big going on with you, Miss Huxtable? Um, I'm almost done editing my book. I'm so happy for mm. you. Monday is when I send the final. Can we get a name of the book? Is that or is that part top secret? It's right called um, Mucus in My Pineal Gland. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. That's the first time I've seen that. Miss G is pretty, so she's kind of wrong. Um, say that again. <laughs> Mucus in my pineal gland. Pineal gland. Pineal. Does it have a significant oh, part in the title? The, the pineal gland is where um, it's like. Dream production is where it happens. It's mm -hmm. like oh, people sure. that are really into like aliens in Egypt are all about um, the like aliens. You know, and it's a part mm -hmm. of your so brain. This is a fiction book. Uh, it's poetry. Okay. Oh, okay. And it's some poetry about some of the poetry about the girls and my experience. You know, transition stuff. Some of it's like about history. Some of it's about black stuff. Some of it's about sci-fi. It's kind of a collection of everything mm -hmm. I've been working. Okay, well, we'll definitely be looking out for it. Once that book comes out, let us know. We'll promote it. Oh, yeah. Sure. Definitely. In May. Of course. Okay. Oh, May. May 2017. I'll, 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 I'll read it on the show. On the <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's your gauge of diamond. What's your tea? Sugar. Okay. Sugar. And I would like to say, just to start off, this is saying, like, like, big ups, actually, because, like, nobody else does this. Um, like, promoting other, other trans artists or trans um, authors or trans anything. So especially when it's a trans uh, woman. I, I think trans women of color, I don't think we give big ups to the next woman. So yeah. definitely here on this show, I think this is cutting edge. This, this is what I mean by cutting edge. And this is how we move into the future. This is how we change You know the narrative that we have. Um, and so I definitely respect that. But uh, my tea, <laughs> my tea is, okay, um, I'm actually working on the first annual Harlot's Ball that's coming to New York City, and it's to, um, to destigmatize um, and to kind of like own the word or, or own who we are. Uh, or who society says we are. Be visible. Okay. Def definitely. Yeah. So they, they used to call us back in the day, I don't know if y'all remember, oh, Harlot. You know, you wear your little short skirt and all this old stuff and, and fishnet and stuff. They said, oh, that's a harlot. 
it's an old word that they use. I don't it's a hoe. Hoe. Mis yeah, for misogynistic mm -hmm. word that they use for hoe. So what I'm doing is trying to reclaim that word and trying to reclaim our spot. Um, since I've been in New York, I've never seen an all trans event to where trans like are the hoes. Um, they planned it right. and all this other stuff. It's always the gay men. And so, even which we love, which we love, we De do. definitely we love. I'm gonna be very honest. Let me cut you off. But all my fans, I'm gonna say this from the beginning, have always been gay men. I rarely get other queens yeah. like that, unless they're in the industry also. But it's yeah. really hard for a girl to take her crown off and acknowledge another queen. You know, it it's like, yeah. well, well, you know what? I can't do that, so I don't even want to acknowledge you. Mm -hmm. So, because everything is about competition. Yeah, it is. It and is. with the gay men, it's like they just live, and that's it. Like, they live, right, right, right. And that's exactly, it. exactly. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. We, you know, we kind of, we kind of talk like, um, and I was so glad because like now I have like this little relationship with Ashley, so we're calling, we call each other on the phone, and so. We like to talk about all stuff. Yeah, oh, she's the R and B. She was right. She was right. right. She she was she's the R and B pop, the R and B trans star, and I'm the pop pop. Right. right. So, we, so, so, we, so we be on it. So, um, so we can just to talk about some of these things a little bit, and um, and they're really important because like it, it's what I need to hear, and I think sometimes it's what she needs to hear to keep us going and keep us motivated because it's like you know, as trans artists, you know, we have no encouragement. Absolutely, like. But this is for what you said with gay men. And um, to think about my producer, like nobody, I, all the time I, I've been here has said, okay, that's a singer, let's invest in her, or let's see what she's about, you know. It was a gay man. You know, we have trans women that are in leadership that's able to say, and I've had like um, gender non-conforming people that, that are a friend of mine, like, look, to, to come to some of these leaders that we look up to and we share all this stuff and we idolize, they'll say, oh, have you met Shigeisha Diamond? And they're begging them pretty much, like, have you met? And they're very much, you know, um, non to do, like, in panic, you know? Yeah. And so for me, I feel like they have the opportunity. They recognize us, they watch our content. You know, like um, a, a video that was put up on Facebook about one of them. You know, um, they communicate amongst each other, so they watch our stuff. Yeah. So they, they just feel like a trans inner, like inner, inner circle. circle. Well, yeah. and, and if you if you know about Facebook, I, I made a group called the Trans Inner Circle. <laughs> it, it was a it was a key. That's key. your that, that's yeah, yours. It's a key key. Girl, it's a key key. And the, the words of Miss Stephanie Milan. I watch it. That, that's a key key. It's a key key <laughs> because it's something that's already happening, but it's something I'm trying to. I be, I believe that that we are the ones that put the stamp on what's in, what's out. And so somewhere along the line, we stop doing that and we start allowing these leaders or, or those that we deem and put in a position to just be our face and be our voice. And now they've forgotten about us in that and, and that. So we uplifted them and shared all their videos, all the things, even if it wasn't cute. We, oh, that's a door. Oh, let's share this. Okay. And then you got a, a thousand uh, shares from this one person that said the same thing that we just said like a week ago. Mm -hmm. And so um, with that being said, it's like it's a competition. There's only room for one. And so um, like my producer, um, um, I don't know if we can give the name or, or you what. You can give the name. Okay. okay. But, uh, I'll, I'll wait a minute. Yeah. Because I feel like as a trans woman, because I this is like I know this school, this is going on topic because we're about to must gym, but um, as a transgender to want to work with cis men, it's really hard to yes. be able to work with someone who is in the community and. and it's all about uplifting you. It's mm -hmm. a blessing because it there was times where I know Fox could relate. Like she would deal with producers that would not want their name on the song because they be considered as gay or you're must. Those sexualized. So true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, you are working with one of the biggest songwriters and producers out right now. And even he had to to tone down, which is really interesting. He had to tone down his uh, his feminine appearance in wow. order to be where he's at now. Wow. So and it, it, it should speak numbers on how they think about us and, and like how we originated from from like you know coming up growing up as as, as, as kids or whatever in in, in, um, in POC homes. Yeah. It was always said you could be anything you want to. You can even be a gay man. Just don't be no girl. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure yeah. everybody at this table heard the same thing. Yeah. And as I spoke to other trans women, it's the same thing. So we know what the narrative is. So even when we're walking down the streets or whatever, and you may get into it with a man who may not be a real man. You know, if you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, real men recognize real women. Yeah. So I'm saying that to say this, is that when you get into it with this man, people on the outside, especially cis women, 
you know, being in their, sitting in their privilege and their ignorance. They'll say something like, oh, just take it off. Oh, you can just take it off. You be like, okay, my boyfriend just jumped on me. Well, you are still a man. Just take it off. All right, fight him like a man. Man mm -hmm. up. Yeah. So these are things that are problematic within our, you know, within who we are. So we have all these personal and physical attacks coming toward us, mm -hmm. and nobody sees our struggle. You know, nobody understands our For music stuff, I've gotten a lot of support from gay men. But for art and writing stuff, a lot of gay women have mm. been really supportive. And sometimes gay men in those positions haven't been as supportive of me. I don't know why mm. that is, but I feel like I have a lot of lesbian support. Well, you know that. what, I honestly I think before we get into that, we're gonna, we're gonna, I think we're gonna save some of this for the after show. Sure. Because we're having a really good conversation. <laughs> but um, I think since we're talking about the industry and everything like that, um, one of the things that I've been wanting to talk about that's been a really hot topic for quite some time is um, skin bleaching. And as you can, guys can see, we're gonna show a couple examples. Um, as you can see the screen here of some celebrities that have been um, Scam alleged to, you know, been scam bleaching and everything was like that. that. <laughs> was the, was the, expo, the, the one that, the, ba the baseball player, the, 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 the Dominicano. Uh, <laughs> he went from um, her color to like my color. Sierra? Yeah, yeah Sierra's husband. Yeah. Sierra's husband. Sierra's husband? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, so ba a baseball player. Since since y'all really... Her, really her, yeah, the one that's, yeah. Since y'all really, really want to go there. Uh huh. I don't think I can name one celebrity right now. They haven't bleached. Honestly, From Beyonce on down. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. I mean, I'm trying to get dark and everybody's trying to bleach. <laughs> I'm just saying, I really want to get dark. You know, and it's funny because I heard, I, when I first heard of skin bleaching, it's all oh, this is what you get to use to use to remove freckles and, and stuff. And, and then it became like a big fad. Everybody's using it to, you know, become white. And it was like, you know, I don't want to have to believe people are actually bleeding, you know, bleaching yeah, their skin. Because some people believe that. I think people are like it. And they think they're like, oh, I have a dark spot. It's for my dark spot. And it starts with that. And right. then it does. just like, Very much they so. spiral into white women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you can't. You but can't go from a dark spot though. If you know you can't go from a dark spot. You can't go from white hands. You know they have oh black hands or white hands. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's not even go there. Or white. There's some celebrities that we have right now. They, they haven't finished the process. And they haven't done it right. Right. They so, found a way. Or they're using the wrong process. Especially when you have siblings, right? And that's all I'll say. You have siblings. That, um, we're talking about the Smiths. Hey, Jay. <laughs> How you doing, Jay? We well, got a seat for you here, girl. <laughs> but you know, it's 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 definitely taken. You know, a lot. Of, um, a, I I think it's definitely taken the. Um, society by um, by mainstream because of the fact that you got a lot of artists, a lot of actresses that are doing it. I mean, you even got community leaders that are so for black trans lives, mm -hmm. you know, and but you know, you know they're, they're, they're ble bleaching your skin, skin but you're, you know, bleaching your skin. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact of the matter is, is that I will take it from my own experience. I remember when I was just starting as an artist, like like 20 when I was like 25 and I had came across a manager he basically told me that you know I could market you a little bit better mm -hmm. if you were maybe like three shades lighter and that's, I could you know pass you off that's so hard or something. that's so you hard. know so you can imagine to myself how mm -hmm. a blow to my self-esteem that was and I think that I'm um, bleaching the whole thing when it comes to the black community the black men are the ones that pressure some women oh, to yeah. bleach oh why did you have you know what I don't understand hair? Well, um, like we were talking about or whatever, um, like, you know, and I always try to keep it real, I mean, I struggle with the same thing, you know, with the um, skin bleaching as well. As dark as I am, you know, I was um, kind of like, you know, settled with my blackness, you know, I was like kind of like back in the day, in the IRA, uh -huh. about my blackness. And so now y'all already know in the R she gonna bleach your skin too. Yes. Wow. So, so yeah. So that was not Miss I not my hair. Yeah. Yes. Not Miss I not my hair. So that was one of my inspirations that kept me going. So, wow. so when I look at look look at, uh, at at systems of like oppression, I think about like women that are overweight, like Kelly Price back in the day, and Monique back in the day that kind of like 
stormed through the through the door that 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 we weren't welcome in. So mm -hmm. being like everybody by do um, not everybody excuse me and I read you know she wasn't doing this new thing where she was showing cleavage or body or anything she was just all vocal and her her hair was you know tied up you know um, so everything that was considered <laughs> in our realm to be beauty was hidden from you know mm -hmm. and, you know in in her um, in her um, her uh, presence or whatever or, yeah yeah in her presentation. So, so when my situation starts, go ahead, go for it. When my situation, I w I got married when I got here because mm -hmm. I had always dreamed to be married, have this picket white um, fins and all this so good stuff. The American dream, girl. Yeah, the American dream. The American dream. Right. I and I thought, I thought that as a trans woman, I had the right to have access to the American dream like anybody else. Everybody else. And so when I moved to New York, I was like, okay, it's a little bit more here, a little laid back, and people are more diverse and you know open and things of that sort. So I came here and got married. I was with this guy for um, a year before we got married. What was him? Um, he was a month. And he, okay. and he prided himself on being a mutt. And I said, always say, when you call yourself that, and he prided himself like, I'm mixed with this, I'm mixed with that, right. I'm mixed with that, and I and I find oh, was he really that is the biggest, because, he was, he was, okay. but that's the biggest hatred that we have um, in POC that, you know, that if we got a lick of a mixture in us, Not we're mixed with Indian, we're mixed mm -hmm. with Cherokee, we're mixed with that, we're mixed with, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're mixed with anything, anything but black. You know, anything but black. Yeah. So we're running away and escaping from our blackness. And so when we have like men that are supposed to be the powers, that are supposed to be the strength behind us, you know, that we're supposed to find comfort in, in, in you know, and kind of like relax on a little bit, you know. I found that he was weak as a man because he was trying to tell me that he had a weakness for for Spanish women. Mm -hmm. Like the whole relationship, you know, it started to turn into that. I have a weakness for Spanish women. So every time, you know, we go into a space, he's looking at Spanish women, and, and you know, my own blackness. He made me feel insecure by my own blackness, and so he got to the point that he told me that I should bleach my skin, mm -hmm. and so I started bleaching Shut my the front skin. door. Yeah. And just and it goes to show you what we as women, as trans women, already with this like lower expectations mm -hmm. and lower um, sense of of, of of who we are and and what we can do and who we can pull. Like they make when we get in relationships, they make us feel like we're less than a cis woman. Yes. And like they're doing us a favor by being with them. Exactly. And so we get kind of caught up in this thing. Somebody's giving us love and all this other stuff. And then they, at, at some point, start hitting us with these things that we can't have children or that we're darker and we're too dark or we're too big and things of that sort. So when he hit me with those or things. Or not woman enough. Or not woman enough. And he did that too as well. Yeah. You know, um, we, we talked about in the beginning how um, I wanted to have a family. That was the whole reason for marriage and all that stuff. I wanted to, to adopt and, and have a family. Um, and so, um, so we talked about this even before we got together. I made him wait like nine months before he even seen me. He walked over three hours to come to see me. And so once I finally gave him this chance and then he pulls that, like I said, we talked about children and things of the sort, but it wasn't until it was a friend of mine, a, a cis woman, that he, re he related this information to. He didn't even confide in me. He was living in my house. You understand? And as a strong black woman, I was trying to uplift this man that wasn't worth uplifting. So instead of me trying to find somebody who was meeting me halfway to where we can be something in each other's lives and build each other up to the level, he could be my Ike and, or I could be his Ike, or whatever the situation is, and we can push each other up to the top. But instead, I was in a relationship to where, with a the, with, with the man, who had a desire for, for a cis woman, but was with a trans woman, and had a desire for um, a woman that was, was Spanish, but was with, with a, the darkest woman of African uh, descent. Do you think he was with you out of convenience? He was, okay, now I'm gonna tell you what a woman said to me. Okay, first of all, um, cause I'm putting you on blast. Yeah. Hard enough, yeah. she hear you, so, she watching. Right. <laughs> you, you, no, yeah. you, you. Just know it, okay? So, um, yeah, so um, in, that, in that whole relationship, I feel that um, 
that, that I was trying to bring him up to a level, but he wasn't trying to bring him up to a level. He was breaking me down. Like, he didn't yeah. tell me, like, I didn't do enough and all this old stuff. And at the end, like, when he left me with the, with these bills, the electricity that, that was ran up and all this old stuff that I was worried about, I said, I, well, I got the money here. I'm going to go ahead and pay that up. Oh, don't worry about it, baby. I'm the man. I got this. So once he got that money he had put up or whatever, he took that money, you know, when shit got bad. And he took that money and left, and left me with those bills. So the same man I was lifting up, the same marriage I had invested into, like a bank account, like I was investing into a marriage, expecting to, to get something back out of, out of that, you know, out of, out, of the, out of the account. I got nothing. I ended up, um, um, what, withdrawn? Mm -hmm. uh, overdrawn? Overdrawn. Overdrawn. Yeah. Overdrawn. And, and so I had to pick myself up from this relationship. But the slap in the face he gave me was that I was nothing but a pretty face. Uh -huh. And I told him that that was fucked up. And he said, write a song about it. And it goes to show you, it goes to show you how these men, they use you up and spit you out. You understand? For me, he wasn't and even- And cisgender women go through this yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. They do too. But for me, he wasn't even my type. For me, it was only because he said he was a nice guy, and he was different, and he'd been to the military, and all this sort of stuff. He fed me that he was this He fed you the bullshit, right? The bullshit, he fed right? you a whole lot of bullshit. A whole lot of bullshit. And, and long story short, it was just like horrible. Like I said, he told my friend, not me, that he wanted to have his own kids. Mm -hmm. So this is after we had the conversation. So everything that we had discussed in our relationship was subjected to this cis woman that he could confide in and not the woman that he was living with. Mm -hmm. You understand? So for me, that was like considered like problematic. So that's why now I don't focus on the men. I said, you know, the girls I like to fight over the men and all this yeah. other stuff. I said, girl, Miss Thank you go ahead and have it. Look, look, my truth is, my tea is, I was incarcerated for 10 years. Mm. So when I was incarcerated with the man. Mm -hmm. And so if you know anything about that, you know we run the show in this. Yes, yeah. You know, okay. so everything from the officers. Um, um, putting us out in the yard when there's going to be like a riot because they know we'll stop it. Putting us out mm -hmm. there stops. Half the time we start the riot. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, right. But they use us as pawns and the men use us, everybody uses us as pawns. And for me, I feel like, like, like once we get into a situation like that and, and we see that, that we're in control, and we see what the situation is. Why can't we be in control out here? It's the same men. Yeah. But they're just telling a different lie. All those men that were in there, thousands of men. I would never. I would kill. Or this and the other. They're writing their baby mamas, their girlfriends, and all this other stuff. No, I would never. I would kill. Oh, this is the. They're giving these fictitious uh, stories about. Um, trans, why they get yeah, the trans women? Right. Yeah, why they? Oh. Why they get Not them? only that, though, but I'm gonna tell you this: as a woman of color who didn't have assistance in the inside from like family and friends and all the oh, good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. While she was sending that two hundred dollar a money order, one hundred and fifty was going to me. He was keeping the other fifty. Wow. So Shame. real tea. Right. So that's what's going on. And so these same men that are out here and playing this little game and stuff, not only were they having the trans women, but they were having the, the men as well. Oh, mm -hmm. no. And so some of the ones that gave us flack, right? First of all, you have to understand that we are very powerful. We're very powerful to the extent that we come in very um, different shades. And that's our power. Right. Because a trade that, that may not want me and my dark beauty May want you. Right. Or may want you. May want the karma version. May want the red bone. May want may may, may want the may, may or want the uh the mother lots of girl. Right. You know, I wonder and, that. or he may want the white girl. Right. Yeah, they always say, Oh, I don't get down like that. It's exactly. not the right it's, girl. It's a it's a girl that's it's out there funny. Well you know yeah. I always say that's you know and I've heard that person, person place and time. You know, yeah. like right person, the right girl, but, the right place. But what I always say is that you don't choose me, I choose you. Mm. So it doesn't matter what you want, it's what I want. Real man, real man, God's gift to you. you that. You're not yes. God's gift to me. We have to let these men know. Um, Juliana, thank you for that. <laughs> Juliana, have you had like any issues with like just? What do you think um, about skin? Obviously, it's bogus. Look how pretty his skin is. Well, I, I, I love this song. Yeah, I because if, if more if like, more girls see. Confident black women, they'll not think, oh, I have to look like Gia or Ashley in order to get by. Right. Yeah. Can I say this? Well, can I we can we get Julia? Yeah, right. yeah. I they used to like, because I grew up in the South, and my family used to tell me because 
in terms of my brother to my sister, I'm the darkest, my brother is lighter, and then my sister is light skin. And they always used to tell me, because I'd like to play out in the sun, don't play out in the sun, you're going to get too dark. Mm. And my family, would oh. dis my family would actually tell me, like, get out the sun, you should be playing in the shade, why do you want to be out in the sun like that, like, you're going to get too dark. And I was like, so this one is deep. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so they were, and I was always like, I think I look good, I think the sun looks mm -hmm. good, I think the sun feels good. Any human being naturally is going to be attached mm -hmm. to the energy of the sun and, and, and how that looks, but in my family it was like, everybody, like my mom was like, maybe a little bit lighter than me, but my mom protected her skin. She did not mm. stay out in the sun. She we were, we were at a flip, you know, she was at my brother's soccer game, my mom was like, chilling in the shade, we were by the tree, and I always thought that was kind of weird, but I think it's like, I find it kind of weird that people still do it, and mm. in New York, I'm like, that's crazy, like, in the South, it's, it's so clear, people are like, light skin is better. People think light skinned men are more intelligent and more yeah, affectionate, and dark skinned men are gorilla, big dick, mm -hmm. blow yeah. your back out, like, yeah. <laughs> it's so, but in New York, I'm like, some people maybe think that way, but I'm like, there's so many different types of people. It's crazy. Or in Hollywood, I'm like, it's so I crazy, think that's crazy that someone in black with Hollywood. beautiful pigmented skin would hate mm -hmm. themselves enough to look like an ashy. Because I think people look ashy. I think they look yeah. ashy, washed out. It doesn't look right. It's, it's not a it natural. Look good. It's not a natural. Not when they good. bleach, when they bleach, it's like a faded look. I'm not trying to throw shade. But I'm just saying, I'm being honest, the how it's it works. Than it's, 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 like, it's, it's, it's not a natural light color. It's not a natural it's light. It's not a natural color, period. It, I can just say, well, you know, I it's feel kind of orange -ish. Oh, I, feel, I feel like anybody who, anybody who bleaches their face or bleaches their skin to become lighter should not have a problem with anybody who tans them or, you know, tries to get darker. I had this thing when I, I had a, my girlfriends who are two, you know, darker skin girls, and I always say, because I'm Puerto Rican, you know, and, um... But do you feel like you benefit from... That was um, me when I get that uh, You know what? Lately, I've been Growing up, I didn't. I'm a trans woman. Every, I mean, I'm um, in New York. In New York, no. But the, you know, the, they people call always tell me. Store. People always tell me. No. They call around the store. No. Okay. White woman. <laughs> and I hate that because I only have it's your reality. reality. But no, it's not my reality because the only time I have a reality is when I actually get all gussied up. And if you see me in my home life, you see me in my home life. Mm -hmm. see my, you know, I'm still fish, but I'm a Latina woman. You know, I only have to put on my white woman so it it appeals to people. You see what I'm saying? It appeals to people, and I know it's probably gonna get me a little bit further. And I'm just mm -hmm. now learning that. I hate the fact. That that's why people are bleaching because they want to get it further. Is. No, yeah. and, and, and like going back to that, what so I was true. trying to say, that's what I was trying to say, like, you know, and I never saw it like that. I said, when, you know, because I, I, I feel like, you know, I'm no better than you and you're no better than me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, we're equal. Yeah. You know, so for me, when people tell me, oh, no, you can't, you can't take pictures with, uh, make a couple of shades darker and try to give a Carmen Miranda thing, you know, because people will take it as blackface. And it's like, well, wait a minute. I understand why blackface can be so hurtful for people, but I'm not white. Right. One, I'm not white, and two, I'm not trying to do a blackface. And if anybody really knows, you know, my, I have a good auntie, Tamara, Tamara Man May, shout out to you. She taught me that blackface wasn't, you know, just dark makeup. It was an actual black face that, we, that white people in back in the day, because they didn't try. Sorry, yeah. Right, they, it to was play like, black roles. to play black roles with white and red lips with and that. I'm not trying to do all that. You yeah. see what I'm saying? I want to be beautiful and Carmen Miranda and, and right. mahogany if I could, you know. If Beyonce, you know, I said, well, if Beyonce can do it, why couldn't I? She's like, well, she's black. I was like, well, isn't Puerto Rican some type of black? You know, I said, like, don't, don't black people bleach their skin now? You know, it's like kind of. Well, you know, well, I think well, Beyonce I think was very different. much her color. And now Beyonce. Don't get me wrong, I'm not going to take a picture. I'm not going to take a picture. But that brings me to another thing. I think that the door is being left open because I feel like, I think it's people who shamelessly on their melanin mm -hmm. actually are gonna like are eating it because it's so few mm -hmm. people that are like like during the summer it's like I just like I sit out in my yard and I'm just like I'm gonna bake and when I walk <laughs> down the street I feel like people are shocked to see how dark you got just this like and I think I think it's sexy I think it's like it's and glow. People, yeah. I think honestly that people are leaving the door open because so many people are afraid of their skin mm -hmm. color I'm like you can't deny that it's sexy yeah and, and I can't deny that it's radiant like mm -hmm. you just have you heard like, the comment oh you're pretty for a black girl 
Yes, yeah. yes, very much, very much, very much, all That's the time. Very all but what about you, Ashley? Do you, do you feel like you benefit from light skin privilege? You have to. You know, being in you an all black neighborhood. Yeah. I am a white woman, trapped in a black <laughs> trans woman's body. No, um, <laughs> that loves black death. <laughs> Okay, so black lives matter. Right? Black, black dicks matter. <laughs> um, okay, that was very uh, true. true. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think I do when it comes to the black community, like black men. They'll, you know, I'm thick and I'm light skinned. That's what supposedly is a win for them, you know? Yeah. Like I'll see a bunch of pretty cocoa girls walk by. The, the all the dudes in the block will pay them no mind as soon as I come. Yo, light skin, yo, red, Bare bone. taxi, yeah. they call me taxi, cause the taxi's a yellow, right. and um, it's just, and then when I say no, they, they get violent, you know, mm -hmm. fuck you, you light skin bitch, right, right, but I think that's with every man in New York, yeah, it is. and real quick, Not, I you know, have a follow I think story that. before, now that I think about it, but that was years ago before I actually, girl, you're white, you're no, white, I know, I am <laughs> You I can't fun. stand the way you're fun. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> All the stuff that's going on in the world is like, oh, No, but what I was saying is that um, a lot of men, a lot of in the black community, the black men, they get more angry when a light skinned girl denies them because they feel like, yeah. how dare you, you fucking Hollywood uh, yellow <laughs> bitch. You, right. Because, because the they feel like. Is you think you're better than. Exactly. exactly. Now they think you're but better. That's also they think you're better. That's also but they want you to get your best. That's right. Yeah. Their self-hate and the fact out because I'm always is. like, like in the south it was like that. It was like dark-skinned dudes raging on light-skinned women. I'm just yeah. like, well, if you hate dark-skinned women, you kind of have to hate yourself to a certain degree because exactly. you hate everyone that you grew up. That's just internalized racism. Hatred. Mm -hmm. Internalized self-hatred being projected because I'm like. That's crazy to me, and that's why like, I'm always like, because I do feel like what I do feel like with black men, generally black men for me are like, it's like dark skin women are just sex. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just like, it's the yeah. same way with yeah. like light skinned men in the South. I've watched some, there's some Twitter account, this girl on Twitter that posts these, you know, she has some viral Twitter account, and she posted this thing and she was like, light skin dick versus Dark skin dick and dark skin was obviously, you know, man dingo gorilla just wants to fuck you and light skin dude. She was like, they cry after they fuck you and they beg you to, you know. But like, it's actually like, I feel like for dark skin women, it's just about sex because in videos and stuff, you see dark skin women, but it's like in like, it's like belly. It's like the dark skin girl in belly. It's like in a blue. Light. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. it's like a sex. It's like, like the, a sex like the dark skinned girl was the sexy one, the the the, the bottom bitch, and T Boz, who happened to be red, was a wife. Right. And she yeah. had even just more dialogue. Like, but you know what's funny? I, I I hear what you're saying, but I come to realize that you know I I, I don't believe that I'm a light skinned person, and I've been turned down for many many you know. Girl, mm -hmm. I, I I know men who said I love me, I, you're beautiful, and I probably the shit out of you if I could, but. You you know, I love me some chocolate. You know, I, yeah. everybody has a yeah. preference. Everybody do. does have a preference. I think people do. We're like talking about the majority. I just yeah. feel like yeah. people not, on not the street. Okay. I think the way people act, the way people act publicly, and I think with black men, there's a total difference. Our men of color, generally, there's a difference between how they act publicly and what they really feel because of their performance. Black men tend to be the only men like, that will put other women of other races on a pedestal. They will. They will. Like, if yeah. you're they men will. of other races, really? they yeah. so Oh, yeah. yeah. They do. Most definitely. I think I think it, I used to get that all the time with um one of the co-hosts that was on the show in here um you know everyone knows me on and everything like that but when we go out in public and everything like that a lot of times these men would break their neck you know would be like yo yo what's up you know come to me and everything like well, that and be like Asian Asian and yeah yeah whatever you know <laughs> some um, men but, but, but the fact she wasn't black that's the, that's right the, yeah, yeah. I get you. they would break their neck you know. A lot of times I'm thinking they're coming to talk to me and like, yo, 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 what's up? How and I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, and they'd be like, it's a situation, friend. And I'm like, oh, well, you can but talk to her yourself. No you know shade to Milan. You know? right. I think she's beautiful, but I honestly, living, being trans, I've learned that when it comes to like light skinned girls, Asian girls, that you, they, you, they have to get to know us before they can really see the real us because it's all about a fantasy with these men. You know, I, I have a theory. Most men want to fuck a light skinned bitch, but they're gonna they're gonna yeah, marry yeah. they're gonna marry a black mom. Uh, Cause uh, she gonna take care of the house. Take care of home. Home. Take it right. Like, and, 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 and,
and and that's not, why you leave Dante alone and you get you a Henry. Oh my God, you're so bad. I, I'd rather be a black man that's called Calvin Henry. Yeah, you, you know, know. <laughs> I don't think there's a problem that I'm men just, have a preference. Like if you have uh-huh. a light skinned woman, that's well, that's fine. But in the process of you preferring a light skinned woman, do not don't tear the black woman thank down. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Like, yeah, yeah. We were on a train one day, and a man didn't have all his sense. He didn't have all his scruples. They never do, honey. And, and, and they're, they're always on the yeah. train. The they're always on the train. No shade, but the, so, the cuckoos are always let loose. I'm so I I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. I don't want to sound offensive, offensive, but I believe that he not, I I people that, 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 that are on strong, strong drugs, they'll say anything. Uh-huh. So they'll expose you. Oh, you look pretty good for a trans. Like, I believe the people that are high will say the damnedest shit. Right. And I tell them right then, I look to their friends and I tell them, now, you got a smart eye, now you two, hanging with him, ask him how he knows I'm a trans. But, but, the, thing, but the thing was, what he did, he had a whole speech on this train. Because one African American woman that was dark like me, said one thing that was offensive to him, he went off on the train. That's why I can't stand black bitches. Can't stand y'all. I prefer a light skinned girl. Black women, all y'all doing is, is lying. He was coming from a hurt place. He yeah. was coming from a hurt place, but I don't feel like all that anger should have came from that one little incident. Because it was a lot of women of my shade on there, but it was only one of, uh, woman that was my shade that gave him the problem. Yeah. So why would you have to ha- uh, release all the internalized hatred? Because he had it bottled up. Yeah. It's but also it's just easy. I feel like it's, I feel like I think I feel like a lot of a lot of in the black community it's like black men are already so belittled. The only thing mm-hmm. that they can project onto are black women. Mm-hmm. Who exactly. else? White women. They take out they take out, they take out all their frustrations. So it's kinda yeah, like the police are harassing them, so they yeah. want to harass us. Yeah. 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 Black yeah. women are just supposed to and I think black men in a lot of circumstances this is one of my frustrations with, with black men is like I felt like I'm supposed to you think it's my responsibility yeah. Yeah. to and they're the, like the bad guy. They, they want the bad guy. They, yeah, and they're the first. I also think that's romantic. That Hold like, me down. Me like shit because right. you're oppressed, and I'm like you are. But like I don't. But I think the negative side of that is someone screaming on a train to a dark-skinned woman. That's yeah. why I don't like darks because I've seen that happen where it's yeah. like black men just like tirades is tearing black women and, uh, apart and I'm like, right? you're, thing you're also too. tearing yourself apart. And, and your you mother, die. because you're an African American uh, man and you're darker than me too, so when you're tearing down an African uh, American woman that's my shade, knowing your mother was my shade or darker, you're my shade or darker, and you're talking about the next person, this internalized hatred of your own skin, you know, and, and it's like it's like a person, like I have a lot of friends and, you know, you know, and no shade toward them, but a lot of friends that, that, that mentally think they're white. Uh-huh. And, you know, I don't think it's... They're stubborn it's, in their ways. You, you know, you know, like, like they'll tell you, I'm a white woman. Very much a white woman. You know, and so, like, you'll be like, you know, and they'll, and, and you, you know, you'll say certain things. Well, I don't do that because I'm a white woman. And so, <laughs> it, it, it means something to be a white woman. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what happened to the liberation of, of black women and, and the power that we had, you know, to say, you know, the same thing like he did with the white woman. Do you want to bring a black woman to say yeah, not, I, I honestly feel oh, that it has to do with something with the music today. Oh, All that Tommy Becky and, and, right. and, and the thing and the dad get you a I white like, bitch. Black I, guys, think, you know, you know, I think another do thing. Do you know too. about Tommy Sotomayor on no. YouTube? What's the story? You, he's like, so sometimes I on YouTube I get. Oh, so am I. Yeah. Oh, I can't stand him, girl. No, but he. That's, but that's what so many, so much of what's happening with black men. I watch all of his shit. He just only because it talks helps me about understand, black women. Right, but it helps me understand how so many black men. You know, on YouTube, it, he's way. like he always ran. Always, he's always, he's he's always throwing us under the bus. You definitely see. If him we twerk, YouTube, if like, we twerk, right. Say, say, say it was if this video of right, Ashley twerking and, and millions, of people, millions of people is on it, watching Ashley twerk, 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 twerk. Yeah. And so they everybody going in like, oh my gosh, she was really hitting it here. <laughs> Tommy, on the other end, <laughs> would Ashley go in and, and say, African American women, all they do is they don't think about education, the only thing they think about is twerking and twerking their ass, but white women don't do that. And, and then so it'll be a white woman very much twerking, mm-hmm. and he'll go in. 
And be yeah, that's a, that, 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 that sounds like, like a personal issue. He attacked black women. No, but he yeah. has such a huge following, and I think so, he does. I think yeah, he has a, a lot of men feel that way. So many, not just black men, but a, a, he has a huge black male following, and it's black men who think that they're being empowered by degrading black women, and their, his whole mm -hmm. thing is like any black woman. Like he thinks like Angela Davis. Like they literally they make little memes where it's like black feminism. Is this black feminist? They literally draw like pictures of like Angela Davis or black women, you know, with froze, like mm -hmm. 60s activists with the mm -hmm. white man on their chain. And it's like, mm -hmm. and they all date white women, they're all married to white women, and they're totally open about that. But anytime a black woman just voices herself, and then if she is dating a white man, she's a uh, went a bed wench. Oh, so right. She's a bed wench. You know what? I just want to say this. I, I, I'm just like, I, it's so crazy to me when I see this shit. Like, we could talk about this for a whole hour, but <laughs> one of the things that I'm glad you guys brought up is that, you know, how black men objectify the women and everything like that. And that brings us to the next topic is like, <clears throat> just like how black men will go in on a girl's skin color and everything. And I think this is just something that we can really relate to as trans women. How many of you all have ever been misgendered? You know? Oh my God, I was misgendered today. Really? Yeah, just basically. Yeah, this one, that's why I said, that's why I said that me and, okay, Brooke, uh, um, Brooke and I, uh -huh. we're going to get some coffee, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna hurry up to the show. I don't want the girls to think I'm gonna be in the like, oh, she's so shaved and this <laughs> thing, and then they come in on time, and this and other. So I was like, really, really trying to be concerned about being punctual and showing that I had respect and all of this stuff. And so, like, Brooke needed her coffee because, you know, I was dragging her this way. So I said, the poor baby needs some rest. So at least something I can do is get her some coffee. Uh -huh. You know, or make sure she had the coffee. So she was going to get the coffee or whatever. And this this woman, fucking tranny. Uh -huh. Hatred. I said you fucking crackhead bitch. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, okay, see, before, before, before you come down on me, let me tell you why I believe it's an illness, right? Yeah. Now, I personally had friends, uh -huh. right, that, that struggle with it, uh -huh. and it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't by our own design that this stuff was put out right. there, yeah. you know what I mean? Really and, so, and so, in, in a lot of cases, you know, we're sitting here, we're just perfectly fine. But Ashley may find a little boo that be like, oh yeah, I love you. Sorry, Ashley. <laughs> but, <laughs> me? Cause you're not a real Geo. I might want to point Fox out. Right? Just think Geo. I'm gonna get, get, okay. get Fox too. Okay, when Geo <laughs> finds a boo, right? Hey, and he's boo. like, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, look, I love you so much, girl. And look, I'm gonna take you and show you the world. And so Gia kind of falls into this, into this trap. It just puts in her face. And she's right. <laughs> and so at some point he says, <laughs> It's very, very, it's very, very, very um, incognito, very discreet, like, it's very innocent, like, the way they introduce you to it. Because I was introduced to it several times. Even on the train when I met a, a guy I had only met, like, 10 minutes, he was he had some stuff on him trying to get me to... Mm. I'm like, okay, no, baby, he said, you were strong-willed, because he asked me, like, 80 <laughs> times on the train. <laughs> and, um, like I said, like, man, they'll be like, okay, baby, don't just hit this, we'll you relax you, whatever the situation is. And so you love this man. You get turned out. Mm -hmm. And you get turned out. Next thing you know, he got you home. So it's something that's designed. It's a, it's a pitfall that they put in our community, first of all, for our black men to fall victim for it. Our community, and black period. Women. And, and black, black that's why I want to uh, understand. The community in general, because right. there's a lot of people. Yeah, they they that shit in Puerto yeah. Rico, too. So, like, and then people, they really want to stop this stuff. Okay. You know what I mean? But they can't. You know what I mean? It's just like a cigarette. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you finally get to the system to work. Now you need it when you use the bathroom, you need it before you eat, you need it after you eat, you need it before you go to sleep, after you wake up in the morning. So now it's the same thing. So cause, it's, cause, more cause it's more intense. Like for me, yeah, it, it, my it, anxiety and and herbal supplements, I'll just say, uh -huh. is for me to get out of the house. Weed is natural. I, right. But you know, for some people, you know, it's like what it's become for me now is become a crutch. Yeah. Right? Like I can't do nothing without it. 
<laughs> You're blunt. <laughs> you can say it, girl. Right. I'm you a know, pothead. Everybody knows right. I'm a pothead. But, but I only say that because, like, right now, it's still criminalized. So they're always looking for black people to say, right. oh, yeah, I do this, I do that, and looking to catch us with, like, even a nick. So, you know, again, it's criminalized for us, but not for uh, Caucasian people. So it's like it's like these pitfalls were only set for us, and it goes back to talking about Denver, of how those those people were criminalized for, for the marijuana uh, charge mm -hmm. before it was legalized. But and now the same white people are walking around the same neighborhood, smoking, smoking free, smoking while those people, while our people are still locked up. Mm -hmm. So it's not a pit, it's not um, something a pitfall that was designed for them. It was only designed for us. And and these drugs was like okay. First, it was a, it, it was it was considered to be uh, um, a, a drug that made you think. Mm -hmm. You but know, um, no, the um, right? yeah, oh. and in a spirit form. Okay. And so, yeah, and so and so people were. Oh yeah, philosophy is this and that another and mm -hmm. and another college. right. But now they add this chemical, so black people, it's a completely different. It's not even the same same. Um, drug, it's it's worse, and so now it's been targeted toward black people. Like they're criminalized, but they're criminalized you know for it. But where do you come from? I just want to say this, okay? Because because I I think this is a really good topic. We're gonna go ahead and scratch the misgender, and we're gonna talk about <laughs> self medicating in the community. This is something that happened as a recovering addict. Um, I can totally understand where you're coming from, but I will say this not exclusive to just the black community because mm -hmm. you know when you look at harder drugs like heroin, crystal meth, that, you know, that tends to be targeted toward the gay community and it's also worked its way out to right. the um, the straight community and everything like that. And it's so funny because I had put out a post today and I said, what would a world without drugs and alcohol look like? I've seen that. I've seen that on know, Because it's, it's so prevalent out there, you know, and so many people need it to get by on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. you know. Um, if I can just say this, yeah. I'm probably going to come off, excuse me, but I've had this philosophy and I understand, I'm a big, I understand completely that addiction is an illness, yeah. but um, I, I, in my head, I feel like you chose to be sick. You chose to be ill because... No, that's not you make a choice to pick up the drug. To pick up the drug, right. right. And but sometimes... The addiction is right. hereditary. Yeah, yeah. The addiction. It, you right. right. That's, that's not true. Family. That's not I'll true. Say this. Wait, wait. Let me just okay. say this. Not true. My father was a heroin addict, and he died. And when he died last year, two years ago, he died of an overdose on Xanax. I have never done heroin. I've never done crack. Never done coke. Never done any of that. I smoke, smoke weed. weed. I smoke weed. That's but still that, an addiction. That's no, it's not because I'm not stealing. I'm not dying. I'm not killing for it. I'm not doing anything for it. My bills are paid. But there's people who do Christmas and smoke, smoke coke. They do slip yeah. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Very true. Very true. Yeah. There is that yeah. one very true, I'm not, and I'm not knocking those people. But you also get you, weed doesn't make you sick. We if you stop smoking weed, you what are you gonna do? You're gonna eat a little bit more? You know, <laughs> with crystal meth, heroin. It but hurts weed you. does make it, people pick people like have more slow and delayed. No, and, and, and please, I'm not saying this, you yeah. know, because I understand that once you decide to do it, you know, I also learned at the time that sometimes when people do those type of drugs, it's to hide something that they're hurting inside them for. So, yeah, of you know, course. All we can do is friends is to be there and support. Yeah, because um, but even alcohol, like that's yeah, what even alcohol. Some people are alcohol. <laughs> she said, "I got the go." That's 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 a go. She said, "I'm an alcoholic." That's a ghost telling me to be quiet. <laughs> um, you know, in my family, you know, my mother, she, you know, she was at a point drinking excessively, and I think now she's trying to control it. And I used to take the blame thinking it was because of my lifestyle. I thought that she drank because of me. I mean, I was letting her down. But, you know, I don't believe it is hereditary. I don't think that it passes through. Because I never yeah, thought of so picking up. I never I thought of, if I, if I, I never drank, I never smoked, I don't. Because I know what it is. If I see it, it goes to you. It can skip generations. But I've yeah. seen how it affected her. I saw how just when I needed how her, and she her. was, yeah, and she was in that space. I, I did. I, it hurt me, you know. So I don't know how to. When I have friends who are in that, in that, in that space, I feel like you know it hurts me because they're hurting. Right. And some people don't want to talk about it because it's so, personal. Yeah, some people don't but I think that it. it's a lot of deep rooted issues, and I don't. It's a lot of deep rooted issues, and sometimes you know, um, it's it's something that happens a lot in the community. You know, I talked about it on this show. I've dealt with it on this show. Man, you know, and I watched yeah. it. I watched it.
Sorry, show too. Can I yeah. ask, yeah. 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 ask you a question as a sister, a friend? Yes. When you picked it up, whatever drug that you found yourself, you know, uh, addicted to, uh -huh. you know, um, did you do it just the first time as recreational? And then you know, I did it as recreational, and then basically it became my nasty. Yeah, and then it became a habit. But you know, I've always been a functional addict. You know, okay. something I still deal with to this day. I'll be honest. Sometimes when you, you know. be like, "Girl, I'm high now," I'm like, "Really?" I was like, because you know, I've met people who gotta do heavy drugs, and they are nowhere near to what a functional, you know, to what I. So when I see a functional addict, it's like. Okay, girl. So you, you said it. that people that do weed is different from other drugs. The same, it might be the same reaction because they've done so it for so long. you be addicted to I, was addi I felt like I was addicted to weed for a while. I stopped smoking weed for like over a year because I was smoking like bomb reps like six times a day. I that do was too. my emotional coping. Yeah, Really? Uh, yeah. I, I was like, weed coping. for me, I'll be honest. I know it's a drug and it, it is still the same, but you know, but weed for me, I feel like it opened my mind to more things. Like, it opened my mind to believe that there was more than one girl out there. You yes. Didn't, you didn't yes. have to look a certain type yes. of way. Prime example. I was. You know Tamara? But I'm the only person. Ecstasy. I'm the only person that does not. Can do that. So many things. So many. Ecstasy. So many I, things uh, can do that. I was getting. I found myself um, doing it every night and I had to let it go. Amazing experiences doing a lot of drugs that can open your mind. But I just feel like, like for me, I feel like I want to be sober to enjoy it. I, I don't understand people go to these trips and like, it was everything. And then I understand and I that too. Wake up and I remember. Well, I feel weak. But I have a girlfriend. I have a girlfriend. She's not here. She will go and have, you know, she's a, you know, she's an escort. She's a working girl. Shout out to all the working girls. Hey. Shout out to my girl. That might be um, at the hotel right now, waiting for a date, and you decide to watch right. two times. Get your money. Well, you know, she, she will. She will party with survival. the dates. Nothing wrong with survival mode. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Survival sex work is yes. definitely, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Just but she will get high with the dates. Yeah, thank you. Wake up and then the date will take the money back. They will rob her. Yeah. So I think that, that the before. party is. Wait, what does she have on? She will, you know, do crystal meth and coke. And basically yeah, the yeah. date will get her high and then rob, right. rob them, take the money back. And she'll wake up stranded in hotels. And, you know, I see people, Sorry. certain people they can't handle it. it. But they do yeah, it because they just want their life unmanageable. But I want to talk about alcohol, though. Huh? Some people mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. true, right? Yeah. That's, I, 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 I have a story. I have a story. <laughs> and it was recent. I don't drink, but, you know, we had through a party. And I had decided to, because there was a sex toy party <laughs> for our good girlfriend, Jaquetta. <laughs> and when I tell you, she tells me, if you're not going to participate in the sex games, you know, like, you know how the, the, the Tupperware parties they have, like, like, sex toy Tupperware. She was selling all the things. And, you know, I'm a bit of a prude, you know, but I'll sit here and I'll joke around. Oh, so I did, bitch. Bitch, and, you got uh, that night. Bitch! Because she, she tells me, okay, well, if you're not going to um, be participate, you have to take a shot. So I said, all right, well, give my shot. And next thing I know, I had the same cup and it kept getting filled and filled and filled. And next seven thing, shots later. Seven oh. shots later, I was sitting on the road. And she again. tried to make out with me. No! no that's a lie. You're oh. a liar. Oh. You're a liar. It's you're coming out here. Right oh. here on oh. seat time. Right here. here. This bitch is lit. <laughs> No, I told I her, I real. said I am LGBT friendly, but <laughs> not that friendly. I'm trying, you dirty girl. Like, you're you a good bitch, please. <laughs> but um, I, I, don't, I don't personally drink. I don't like the way it makes me feel. Yeah, I feel like once I have too many, I can't get stop. emotional. Yeah. You get emotional. I don't get yeah. emotional. I just want to talk and let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest. So, you know, so my thing I want to get back to is, is, is the addiction part. Because yeah. we kind of we kind of seen eye to eye, but we didn't. You know, you, you but I never, you guys, you guys I never got it read, because I've right? grown up seeing what alcohol does, and I don't like we. I just don't. I just never got into it. I never allowed myself to go to that place. Mm -hmm. Some people say that, oh, you know, you need to let yourself go and do it. I just feel like I can't. I feel like I'm too. I'm so like. You're too. I want to be. I'm from Garden. I'm not from. From my experience, from my experience in addiction, right? And and I've been I've been able to like see it hands on. You know, with my ex. When I touch my ex husband or whatever, mm -hmm. because because like his mother was like doing drugs while she was pregnant with him. So it was certain traits I noticed in him that he had. Like, um, hereditary. Right. And so he had withdrawals, like, type of situations. Mm -hmm. And as so, a baby? as a grown man. I don't know. And so, like, it was certain hereditary. things. Hereditary. Yeah, it was certain things I had to deal with with him. Now, he didn't do drugs, but he, it, it, he needed stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, like, the cigarettes. Like, he would. And this is what we're selling. Right. It's, it's, there's certain it's, people. It's, see, I can respect. I'm be honest. And I, I shouldn't say this because. It's, it's, it's not good. Being 
addicted to something, it's it's something that is not like something we should glorify, but mm -hmm. if you have your own coin, which you always do, mm -hmm. your bills are paid, which they always are, and you mm -hmm. decide to and do that, that's your business. Care of, You're a grown woman. All 20 of but when it gets to the point where you're doing it because there's something else, like it's an emotional thing, right. I think that it's like, it's just, that's when it's, it's like, it needs to really be taken under control because. We don't need another girl, another girl overdosing just because she oh, was lost for a moment. You know, like, you know, I know you're right. sisters that, that, that we talk, we always try to put this stigma on sex workers, survival sex workers, right? But we've never addressed like the real cause, the real root cause, the reason why the girls are doing survival sex work. The girls it's, get kicked out, they have nowhere yeah, to go. Exactly. I mean, it's, for, it's for housing. It's, it's to eat sometimes, sometimes, sometimes to get their meal. You know, and so it's not that the girls just want to go out and just get paid for something. It's because y'all holding on to the jobs. Discrimination is at an all-time high with the girls. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're not coming through, bumping through with, um, okay, I'm unclockable all the way. I done, yeah, I done had all the money for um, for laser, and, and I done got my, my, my breasts done, I got my bags done, I done got everything done, and now I can walk through you know, the block without being spooked. So it's like, we have to deal with like so much as far as like 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 trans women and then when it comes to like the you know like the addiction part yeah of, of, of the reason why we're doing these things okay look at the street life but it shouldn't be used as an excuse though people, i know not an excuse yeah people get kicked out of them, their, their homes all the time yeah the same incidents why i tell you these guys step in when your family um step out these guys step in. Yeah. So when these guys step in, and your parents haven't fully taught you in your trans experience to be safe, like you said, with sex work, no matter what you do, baby, just be, be safe. safe. No Nobody's you. telling you these things. They're telling you just be anything you want to, but don't be no girl. Yeah. They're not telling you to be safe. They're not telling or you to be a girl outside. If you, right. And they're not telling you to protect yourself. They're not telling you no. that you're beautiful. They're so we don't go out. But we don't tell. We, we can tell people that now. Right. And we, we can, can tell yeah, them now. We can tell you right now that you're beautiful. So it doesn't matter how your parents and your family and your friends are telling you at home that you're not beautiful, that you're not worthy, that you're not going to make it, you're not going to get your education because of your trans experience. Experience. It's all lies um, that the enemy has has like brought to you to keep you down and to keep you oppressed. Yeah. Because, yeah. because we're making moves, baby. Yes. If I'm mm -hmm. and so I know all the parents at home gagging. All the friends at home gagging. Oh, they'll come around. The trans movement, baby. They'll come you around. Catch up. Must have better catch up, honey. They'll come around when they start hearing your song on the radio. <laughs> they see you on logo and so I say, oh. And I, but you know what? And before you say that, that brings us to the last topic, which is transgression, <laughs> because <laughs> of the fact that while we're struggling here with jobs and everything like that, yes. there's sense of Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood is taking jobs away from us that we should have. Oh my God! And giving to, to cisgender oh. people, oh. and that is why we talk, um, give the okay. segment transgression. Okay. If I may, I don't think that is it on this topic. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Um. I think honestly, it's not that they're giving it to the straight people. I think it's just that we can't find any good. These okay. I don't think that's right. That's not. Right. Right. What we no, no, no. want to say. Like, these what guys, what they they Good decent actor. Wait, say it again. Good decent actor. No, I know you want to go. This is what I think. I think that I think that's straight up just like not true. It's yeah. impossible that that's true. I think yeah. that they're they, not looking. I think they're it's, not. They're I not. think it's shade and it's marketability. They're going. I think they're going to places where trans women. They're going to places where trans women, they're they're women don't go. L. A. is crazy all. that you can't find the towns. That this, they're everywhere. I think people in regular America are passive aggressive and evil, and they would rather see a man. Man in a wig. They on a would. TV show they would. Portraying a trans woman than a trans woman. They I think would. it's our cisgender woman. It's evil. Our cisgender yeah. woman. Definitely. But how, it's so rare. They did Trans America, and that's before it was really a But Michelle pop. Rodriguez is starring in a new movie right now, and she's playing a trans woman. That role could have went to a trans woman. You I think I think they love but, okay. Yeah. I think they love and overall. The community I think is in an upper about that. But I would personally, I'd rather them at least have a woman do it than legit a dude. man. Because it's violent. It's violent. It's violent. Okay, so violent. Okay. So right. And they're always like, it's a true story. Oh, they're transitioning in their fifties. I don't relate to a white man transitioning with five kids when he's already a millionaire. And wherever the fuck America, I think I think it's I think it's bullshit. I think it's a convenient 
ethical, vaguely ethical lie, and I think it's passive aggressive. I think people like my people, the evil people in my family, I know they love being like, oh, look at transparent. It's a nigga in a wig. I think they love that, and I think it like feeds their weird validation that all trans people are. So, no, we're not beautiful. How do we never look? Because, well, how do we change this? You know what I think you would think? The series, what's it called? Angelica Ross is in it. It's like each episode is like five or yeah. ten minutes. No, I'm not trying to. Oh, it's four girls. Her story. It's four girls. Right? Her story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's oh, an that's example of a, of a show where it's like people, or this show, do, even if it's not straight yeah. entertainment, I think it's just trans people being involved and being like, we are going to take this and we're just going to do it ourselves. And even if you don't have a budget, and even if you don't have the support, I think the quality of what trans people are making is better than that's the, the trap. That's the reason why I find it, that's the reason why, why oh. seriously, I get so and pissed off. Oh my God. I get pissed off. There's so many movies to mention. When, when, when they don't respect this show, respect. like shows like Brooke Serta, when, even me, when, when, um, and that, cause, cause we're talking about erasure, honey. Let's talk about erasure. Um, I am her. Mm -hmm. I wrote I Am Her when I was incarcerated in prison over... That's his song, right? Like, yeah. I Am Her. Okay. So, I Am Her have, has escaped even from me. So while the trans community is not showing the support, cis people have came up and robbed me of it. They got merch with I Am Her on there, She Is Me, you know, everything with my whole song in it, they've taken over. So they got hats, they got shirts, and everything. I have nothing. And so and you perform that song at, at, at rallies and every yeah. single where. And so what they've only did was take that hashtag, I am her. They use it for their profiles. Everybody has, oh, I'm Ash Ashley, I am her Jones. <laughs> and so all that happened once I put my music out, but if you look at the likes on these videos, you'll see like thousands of views, but like three or four likes. And so people are just, that's how, how erasure starts. They see something that they like in you. Like the same thing, that, so, yeah, same thing that white people do. And this is not to bash like, like one race, but this is what white people do. They don't like us, they don't love us, but they love our culture. Mm -hmm. So what they do, they steal the rap and they steal the dance and they steal the dialogue and the talk. But honey, they bash us when we come into spaces, you know, where, where, where they tell Chinese when they come over to, to America or watch the African Americans, they steal, they lie. And so we've been given this, this like reputation that we haven't earned. We've been told that they, they, they tell Asians that we're lazy. So not only have we picked cotton and chopped cotton, because I'm from, I was born in Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay. So not only did we pick cotton and chopped cotton, the same sweaters and, 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 and blankets and stuff they wore are wrapping in in the wintertime to stay warm. I literally picked and chopped that cotton for it, and they're gonna call us lazy while okay. they wear our stuff. While they dance to our music that they that they learned from us, while they steal mm -hmm. our style that they learned from us. So again, er erasure is real. So Hillary Clinton, girl, I'm coming for you. Hillary Clinton. Now I'm voting. I'm voting for Hillary. Don't get twisted. I'm voting for Hillary because because um, because she's a woman that you're trying to do this for. And she's also speaking for reparations for African Americans. Mm -hmm. And it's about time somebody start talking about that. Yeah. But this is the thing. Um, her people. So, I am her. Who, Hillary Clinton? I'm with her? Where did it come from? Mm -hmm. did, you hear, did you see her saying I'm with her four years ago? No. Five years ago. Wait, 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 wait. Six hold years on. ago. Hold this on. is a tea time. I was exclusive. having a kiki with her for one little second. And that was the real. Wait, wait, wait. Trans There's women getting raised, and please believe it, because because we discredit each other. We, and we don't that. support each other. These people come and steal our wait, shit. Wait, you're saying Hillary Clinton stole your slogan? I'm not saying she did it. Personally, I'm saying that her people, whoever, mm. like you know how I came to you and I said, okay, Miss mm. Thing, because you, cause you came to me and you was like, girl, are you okay? Because I felt attacked by one of our trans celebrities one time. Uh -huh. I felt disrespected and, and so Ashley spoke to me and was telling me some things and, and kind of like comforted me a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing is, is, um, is, is, this hatred that, that we radiate and reflect off each other, uh -huh. the fact that our own, like, uh, like Fox Giselle would never come and invite me on her show Tea Time. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know? And what happens is I get erased, right? Uh -huh. And so what you do, you bring a cis woman up here on the show. 
she comes out with a song called She Is Me. Mm -hmm. Now you know in my lyrics and my song is I Am Her, She Is Me. Mm -hmm. You know? And we get we get along uh, um, um, swell by goddamn self. Yeah. So right, it, it's copyrighted. But you know what? Yeah, I can see I can see that because you know what you you showed up to a lot of rallies, a lot of protests, and you've sung that song plenty of times. Afro so song, I can see someone shared the stage with Grace Jones. Hmm, that sounds good. There's a yeah. ring to it. Yeah, there's yeah. a ring to it. So right. But I wanted to say this. So do you think that when they cast males to play transgender roles? In TV, our lives, lives, baby. Is it violent? It, it's violent yeah. because uh, it's, it's violent because this, that's where the erasure starts. Because a lot of people in, of trans experience don't realize when you see these movies and you see these sitcoms and things of that sort, you want to you say, "Oh, these producers are creative. These producers are cutting edge." But no, they're not. What it was, they see me and Ashley um, or Gia mm -hmm. uh, or, or Fox. Yeah, you know, um, Argan on the train. And we cut up, honey. We <laughs> cut up. So what they saw, while they sat there sil silently watching, Observing. they saw a sitcom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you see a character that look like you, that's saying, "Byron," you know, girls. and so you, <laughs> so, and so you're wondering, like, where did this come from? Miss mm -hmm. Things sound familiar, and you don't realize. We do that all the time. Yeah. Queen Ursula was inspired by um, Divine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you better call it. You better start calling it. Um, who else? Oh, I have so many. I have so many. Drop. Who? Norbert. 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 No, no, no. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about the girl. Okay. Well, can I play Devil's Advocate? Let me play Devil's Advocate. Trans directed I movie about Marsha P. Johnson that's coming out. Oh, yeah, what is it called? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Something off the, off the top of my head. Party. I'm excited. I think Marsha's birthday. Something like that. It was Star Happy birthday, yeah. Marsha. Happy birthday, Marsha. I'm excited for that to but, come out because that's another thing that I think is actually going to be an example. Yeah, I think we need to do that. Because Tangerine was nice. Tangerine was nice. But I think the general precedent of when trans people really hustle and pull it together is good. It's can I share, better can than, I share something with y'all? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. We actually uh, were on the set of, um, of um, The Garden Left Behind, right? Okay. And that's supposed to be a production that's supposed to be with, um, with trans women as the focal point, mm -hmm. right? And so it's this undocumented trans woman that gets murdered. You okay. know, so dealing with the same things that we um, as advocates have to face every single day, being trans and, and fighting for these trans lives and our trans existence. So, so what what is happening in in this film is the girls kind of come together like we have our now, mm -hmm. and they meet up and start this um, this like group mm -hmm. called the Royal Washers, and and they they're trying to come back, you know, um, what happened to the trans sister, and so this is a movie that is I feel that that like a, a ahead of its time, mm -hmm. but the thing that that the producers said was this right here. Family's going to start looking a lot different coming forward. So it's not, yeah. you're not going to be able to see a film or a TV show without a trans person being the star of it. So you know how before we was always the friend? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or the best friend. Body. The hooker, the prostitute. The makeup artist. The makeup artist, the AIDS The person getting rocks on that thing. Right. So the what drug I'm saying, so okay, so what do we do to stop this trans danger? Okay, so basically, uh, I understand you, Thomas, take yeah. Um <laughs> So basically, a lot of the trans murders, they have to do with the, when you see trans women and they look like men, well, they get men to play us. That's what causes the trans murders because the men think yes. that we're men. They yes. see us. Exactly. All they see is lie. it reinforces. I think, I think they know because so many of the murders is like they live together, and one day he felt emasculated. So it's an alibi. I, I think that's an alibi. I don't it's think it's actually. I think it's, it's both. I think it's or actually in both. like Detroit, the murders that are happening in Detroit, it's an area where you go where all the trans girls are, and, and you don't go to that area and not know that. So why do you think it's like the Bible sex work too? But why do you think the guys know what they're getting? They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. No sense. But you don't have you ever been with a man, right? Now y'all, y'all with me? Have you ever been with a man? That was completely fine with every sexual act I did. He was even trying to do some extra sexual acts that you didn't want to do. <laughs> and after the act was over with, he had this look of shame. When he was ready, he was ready to go. We call that TWS, transsexual withdrawal syndrome. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And then they, they want to kill you. Because they want to kill, kill you. I don't think they want to kill you. I think in that moment. Well, some of the girls, they, they will kill you. They get killed afterwards. Because you the guy, the the guy starts killing guilt. Especially, especially, so especially, 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 especially if I have a friend. If, yeah. I, call, if I call Gia, girl, I was messing with this Trey, girl, and he gobbled me up. And you like, you like, girl, I'm staying. I thought, you know, this, Because now it's out there. So now, not only are you gonna, you're not gonna keep that to yourself. Yeah. You're gonna tell that to Fox. Fox is gonna go, go to tell that to Ashley, and so on and so on. And what that happens is now he has a reputation he has to uphold. Now he has to fight for his masculinity more than ever. Mm -hmm. Almost how like Master used to, yeah, you have to do with Master. Yeah. But you have to understand that, that we're dealing with something that we didn't create. We, we're, we're dealing with something created. that's much deeper. Slave Master created this by demasculating our men. So you gotta understand that our men was nothing but dicks. You understand, walking around naked. Google our sex women. Phone. There was sex phones was back in the day. Titties hanging naked. We was Ooh. nothing but sexually right. objectified. We was being raped by, by the white man. The white man, uh, our, our black man was being raped as well by the white which man. Which nobody talks about. Right, which they don't talk about. They always talk about what's wrong with our black men. The reason why our black men are angry and why they're abusive and why they, why, like you said, because everything is coming full circle, baby. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the reason why why all this is, is the way it is is because like, okay, the man that set up the you know the, the little system already, so they're not already fucked over our men, mm -hmm. right? So our men feel like they're, they're not men. So they used to be called boy up until what twenty years ago. But you know they, they used that boy. logic to shame so, us. They they use that. So many men use the logic, and they say that. The public appearance of black trans women is a product of the white man's the white man's plan to emasculate black people yeah. and literally commit genocide on the black population. And they say that black trans women mm -hmm. are the product of genocide against black. Well, I'm, I, was, I was I would I would say this I would say this. Yeah, no, because that is, that means that it's not I an think individual this, choice. I think that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't think. I also don't think that there's statistically more black trans women than there's white trans women. I just think black people are generally more visible, and white women are less scrutinized. So if you, black exactly. trans women are more visible, like I've I've had this with my other, like you know my white trans girlfriends. I'm like you don't understand because. If you are 25 years old and on the train and like someone clocks you, they think, oh, you're a student at NYU. You exactly. just went to a party. You're a hipster. Exactly. You're, just, you're a hipster. <laughs> you're exactly. You're a hipster. You might be dicking bitches down. That's exactly. Fair. You're white. You could do anything. It's a heterosexual white man. Glitter, lipstick, dress. Right. He's a, he's a, you know, he poly. So why is it so? But like, if you're a black, if you're a black trans woman, you're more visible. So I think that the black community sees the visibility of black trans women, <laughs> and they think that it's a conspiracy. And I'm like, it's not a conspiracy. It, it's the same. Just because we're not lying. I think we I think we had a lot to cover <laughs> today. A lot. A lot. I was saying. <laughs> yeah. After <Astra> show. <laughs> We've had a lot to cover. We, I want to thank my guest, Shageja Diamond. <laughs> as well as Juliana Huxtable. Had a lot to cover. You even had some surprise topics. So, <laughs> if you want to finish the conversation, check out the after show. And, and please, can they please can you tell them to follow? Yes, yeah, stop, stop, stop follow the erasure you. now. I'm not even talking about me. Yeah. Because I feel like like we all have to speak up for each other. Because yeah. I, you guys are speaking up for me now and speaking up uh, up for 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 uh, Juliana right now. Yeah. So I feel like we need it's our duty to speak up for for you guys as well. So if you haven't uh, um, taken time to follow Tea Time with the girls, it's on YouTube. It's simple. Like it. Get it to the share, share it. Uh, subscribe. <laughs> it's that simple. And erasure stops for trans women right then and there. Exactly. And if you don't want to watch us to um, learn something, you can just watch us to For teaching. Yeah. yeah. So if you like to say, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. Well, okay. any last words from anybody <laughs> that would ever find you? Thank you all for having me. I'm oh, so well, thank you so much for coming. Here. It was a pleasure meeting you. And real quick, let's give a round of applause to Miss Juliana because, you know, she's done a lot. It's, 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 it's humble. She's sitting there. This thing, Google the bitch. <laughs> Girl, say that. Oh Google God. the bitch. Okay, because I and I live. I absolutely live. I absolutely have been following her for some time on on YouTube. So you know, kudos to her. Kudos to you know. 
another year, bitch. And as we like to say, if you can't be real, at least be, be real, real with yourself. yourself.